So thank you for joining me for this art blog on using Sennelier watercolor paints to create a portrait of two dogs. Um, all the materials are listed in the description. And I do hope you enjoy this time-lapse video. The original is two hours of raw video. Normally I just draw the images that I'm doing, but because I've got two portraits and I wanna be sure I've got the balance and spacing and placement of the eyes and nose just right, I'm tracing and I'm using a black tracing paper. I press very hard, you'll see, when I do the nose and the eyes, but for the fur and the outlines, I, I press very lightly. Just using a number two pencil so I can see where I've traced. I generally actually use an embossing tool, but I'm not too concerned about the pencil marks. I'm not drawing that many marks. And I do check back to make sure that I am getting an impression. The top doggy is lucky and the bottom I'm sorry, the top doggy is Gwendolyn and the bottom doggy is Lucky. Lucky is the older of the two dogs and they belong to family members. And I met them for the first time a couple of months ago, three months ago. Now I'm just gonna go back and redefine the drawing with my number two pencil. I was very careful to press very lightly so I'd only have light impressions from the graphite. I believe these are my brushes. This is an oval brush. Princeton. I've got a couple of comb brushes from uh, Simply Simmons. I have a number 10 Master's Touch Filbert brush. I have yet another Simply Simmons comb brush. And these are three Taclon brushes from Transon. Um, round brushes for fine lining. A one, a two, and a five. And should I need it, in my travel kit, I have a zero, which comes, which is by Raphael. It's a precision brush. Okay. I'm using the filbert brush to lay down water on the fur for Lucky, the top fur, which is a, an acre, a cream, a sienna. Now I'm adding the burnt sienna and this is wet on wet. I do a combination of wet on wet and wet on dry. I find I really prefer to use the tablet, the buttons, whatever they're called these days. Uh, as opposed to the tubes. I generally use the tubes when I'm doing a limited palette and I'm combining my own colors. It's much easier to do with the tubes, but for what I'm doing here, I really do enjoy using these. And now we're going to add the eyes and the nose. I used a little dark brown for the, for the eye, but I'll be darkening all of that up. I'm washing out a little stream of where I'm going to put some white highlight later on, a gleam in the eye. And I'm adding a little bit of the blue. Oop. 
Oops, I didn't realize I picked up green. But I'm correcting that now. I forgot to look at my chart. The colors are very, very dark. And um, the chart is a little bit lighter, so I would have been able to tell it. Looking at it straight on, it looked like black to me. But I'm going back to the paints gray and the blue and creating a nice dark for myself. And now I'm going to start adding more curls to the fur, more shadow, more darkening. I'm just using the Burnt Sienna, a little bit thicker application, and it's, again, wet on dry. Okay, and I'm going to move on to working with Lucky. Now, the dogs didn't come from the same litter. I'm not quite sure how they were purchased or adopted. Um, they just, they're the same size and they look alike. They have the same coloring. But it's easy to tell them apart because, well, Lucky has all that hair in her face. And if you're with them in person, Gwendolyn is the one who will keep jumping in your lap, making you pet her. I've got a bit of a way to come before I'm feeling really comfortable with the watercolor again, but I am starting to feel better here. Um, getting it to do what I wanted to do, which with watercolor is quite the feat. <laughs> I'm dabbing a little with my Kleenex, which is, by the way, really Kleenex. I know that companies don't like to have their names used in general terms, but it did come from Kleenex. But you can use anybody's tissue or paper towel to dab away excess paint and water. I'm using the comb brush here, um, and actually it, it, I'm using the edge of the comb brush as opposed to the broad side. Um, I just want to make some nice light strikes, strokes, strokes, strokes. <laughs> and now I'm going to be blending in the dark colors for the nose and the mouth and darkening around the eyes. I'm using the Payne's Gray and adding in the purple. And of course, I will build this up because at first it looks absolutely looks purple. And that purple looks very nice in contrast to the sienna. And now I'm drawing in the color. And I'm going to use that same mixture, water it down, and start adding shading and curls to the white fur. It's just that same combination of Payne's gray and purple. Okay, and now 
I'm bringing in some of the sienna to darken some of the areas around the eye and create more curl and more interest in the tawny color. I make sure that the eyes are more present. And somehow being sure that there are more curls around the eyes makes the eyes pop a bit, at least in my mind. That's number two brush, transom tack on brush. And now I'm going to work a little further down. I want to add a little bit more. I am being very tight with the watercolors, more so than I'd like to be, but then again, reminding myself, I'm just getting back to painting, my muscles just building up again. Um, so. I'm happy to work wet on dry to have better control. Okay. working on the gray and the white again, adding that mixture of purple and Payne's gray. I'd forgotten that black doesn't come with this kit, but I do have black in the tube, so I'm set if I need to do that. But from where I'm sitting, it looks to me like those darks are evidently dark enough. And now I'm going to make the tag for Lucky. It was a purple tag, which came in handy for what I was doing. And making the rings that hold it to the collar. I'm going to work on the toy that's underneath Gwendolyn's paw. It's one of those sort of brushes with nubs where the bristles ought to be for the dogs to chew on. I guess it's, it makes their gums feel better, but these dogs are a little bit over the teething stage. Now I'm going to work on the blanket and I'll be doing this wet on wet using my oval brush to lay the water in all the areas of the blanket. Make sure it's wet enough. I'm going to pick up blue. Okay, having done that, I'm going to start adding a touch of the white ink into the fur. Just little places, little highlights. I'm using a number two Taclon brush and I use Winsor Newton white ink. 
That being done, I am now going to outline my portrait with a medium Faber-Castell um, pit waterproof pen. They work beautifully. Uh, they flow very nicely. I was going to use fine, but I decided that I would really prefer to use the uh, medium. Now, this is something that you do in cartooning and that I learned how to do ages ago when I studied cartooning. Uh, but generally you do your drawing first and then you put the color in, which is something that people in watercolor do as well. They'll do the drawing in ink and then they fill it in with the watercolor. And in my next project, that's exactly what I intend to do. I'm going to start with the drawing in pen and ink and then I will paint. It's a very nice touch. It's a... Uh, I guess a 19th, early 20th century approach to illustration, and it's still used. It's still lovely. It adds a little something extra. Um, and I'm just adding a few lines to the blanket. And adding a few more lines within the the actual color image. And now I'm going to sign my work. I always sign it and then I have to do something else. Yes, I took it, taking off the tape. That's washi tape. And I just have to add a stroke or two here and there. It wasn't just quite right for me. I thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this time-lapse video of this particular project. And if you enjoy the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to subscribe, just click on the subscribe button. For those of you who have been following me all along, I do thank you for sticking with me.